Happy opening day eve to those who celebrate. Baseball season is upon us, but before the 2024 baseball season gets here, it's time to get our last MLB best ball draft in. We're going to draft a $10,000 winning team in the drafters MLB best ball championship tonight here on Spike Week. Let's just do it. Hello, again, happy opening day, Eve, the real opening day. We always have these weird things in the baseball space where, you know, we got games that happen before opening day. This is the real opening day. This is when we sit down, we pray that all of the players that we drafted all spring and winter lead us to the promised land. And today, here on Spike Week, of course, with me, Eric Beinfor, we are going to draft one of my final MLB best ball teams, if you have been playing, say, on Underdog Fantasy or on DraftKings, uh, the Dinger, the main tournament on Underdog, has filled. Got my last few teams in last night. That was stressful. DraftKings looks like it's filling up some small contests still launching uh, leading up until first pitch tomorrow. But tonight, <clears throat> we're going to hop into um, one of my favorite tournaments, the MLB best ball championship on Drafters. If you're not familiar with Drafters, drafters.com it is of course a best ball site just like underdog just like DraftKings. but the key difference is we don't have to worry about the fantasy playoffs we don't have to worry about our pitchers going to be limited late in the season innings limits and all that kind of stuff on drafters we are going to draft the team here in just a minute and then all we have to do is score the most points through the course of the entire season against everybody else in the tournament if you have played maybe in the NFL streets, you're quite familiar with the Spike Week sickos, as you see at the top of your screen. Uh, kind of crush it over on, on Drafters. Shout out to Updog and Dorito, two Spike Week sickos, members of the Spike Week community who finished first and second in the NFL Best Ball Championship last year for a cool $440,000. So we're going to see if we can replicate uh, the Spike Weekers' success in the ML. B streets. But before we hop into it, before I talk to you guys uh, here in the chat, I'm going to go ahead and hop into this because it may take, you know, it can take a minute to fill sometimes. Uh, let me get situated here. I probably should have done this uh, before we before we got started. But, you know, you can see how the sausage gets made. Um, <clears throat> I am particularly excited about this uh, baseball season, not because my beloved St. Louis Cardinals. It looks like we are five out of 10. So we need five of you fine folks hanging out with us to hop in the drafters MLB best ball championship. As you see here on your screen, uh, shout out Melch. Our good friend Melch is 146 drafts in to the drafters best ball championship. <clears throat> I, I was unable to get too too many in. I I and I I do this every single year and I get so mad at myself. I end up loving the baseball, basketball. I, I would do NHL playoffs. I would do NHL. I would do PGA. I would do all these, <clears throat> specifically baseball. I really enjoy the uh, best ball, you know, tournaments for baseball. And I just get to this point when it's drafting time for those. And this is like a little bit of the off season, you know what I mean, for us best ball players, where the whole the summer the summer grind of NFL is it's it it's it's crazy, and this it's only going to get crazier. I think this summer is going to be nuts, and so I try not to burn myself out too much. So I've not been able to tr to get in as many MLB drafts as I wanted to, but still, I'm particularly excited because I think. MLB best ball is one of the spaces <clears throat> that is still like really ripe for the picking. I definitely don't have all, all the answers. I'm never, ever going to, going to claim to, but I think <clears throat> if you think about the game, like we do, you know, here on our channel, in our discord community, which of course, if you're, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're not a part of the spike week discord, there is a link in the description for you to join. It is 100% free. There is never ending 
awesome conversation going on in the Spike Week community. Tons of NFL talk, of course, but I found talking to the people about baseball, talking to the people about basketball, uh, my game has improved tons and tons. Um, one person who it has improved from, shout out Billy Jones. Uh, if you're if you're looking for like a little bit of strategy content, it's a it's a little bit more geared towards towards say un, we we're referencing underdog ADPs, but we did record myself, Billy and Bernie, aka B Kurt, uh, members of the Spike Week team, recorded an MLB Best Ball Roundtable. Uh, that is up on the channel. <clears throat> While you're here, hit that like and subscribe button. If you subscribe, you can get notified, of course, for this content that drops. About an hour uh, roundtable where 45 minutes, hour roundtable where we we talked all things strategy and some of the angles that we kind of believe are big edges in this particular season of MLB Best Ball. And I, I really, I, I really, that's why I'm kind of tilting myself that I didn't get more drafts in getting prepped for for the fantasy football season, but. I really believe pretty passionately that there are just some some straight up angles to the MLB game that like are not being utilized to the extent that they they should be. Uh, I think that there are players and player archetypes that are really undervalued. Just even like start looking at pitcher, I think pitching <clears throat> this is certainly some bias for me. But I think the big thing that uh, in my baseball game that has always been kind of good to me where I think comes into play in the MLB best ball streets is identifying pitchers who, generally speaking, this is oversimplifying, strike people out and have major upside. Whereas you'll run through, you know, we'll hop in this draft here in just a few minutes and you'll see pitchers who, no offense, they're, 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 they're good real life pitchers. But strikeouts are king in like just about any form of, of fantasy baseball. And strikeouts can be an indicator, right? If you strike people out, they're not putting the ball in play. And so that's just a great way to have a productive season, a productive career, but in particular, one productive start. If you can miss bats, it is, it's valued here in the best ball space, best ball ADPs, but I really don't think enough. I think that there's a ton of pitchers that go, middle to late rounds that are just honestly it's kind of just wrong and so when we know that when we know that there's pitchers that are undervalued uh, particularly later in drafts and we know that uh, on drafters here you start three pitchers and seven hitters so knowing that we can get load up on superstar hitters and hitters that are just frankly going to score the most points and then backfill with, you know, it, I'm not saying to totally ignore some of the better pitchers because I don't. Uh, I did a draft on drafters right before this where uh, I actually drafted Tyler Glass now and Blake Snell because they fell into a little pocket where I had already started with a ton of hitters. But <clears throat> gen but think about those two pitchers, just the, the archetype of those two pitchers, elite, elite, elite strikeout stuff. I mean, Blake Snell a Cy Young Award winner who's really only cheaper because uh, the holdout, you know, the, we didn't know where he was going to pitch. And that's obviously all been resolved. He's in a, a park that's going to be great for limiting power. And so anyway, I think the fact that we know the market is a little bit wrong about pitchers. Uh, Best Ball Moderate asks, what draft is this? This is the drafter's MLB right here. If you see on my screen, I can zoom. I should zoom a tick, I think. Drafters MLB Best Ball Championship. Looks like we are waiting on just two. So if you want to hop in and join us, Best Ball Moderate, by all means, please do. Looks like it's about 4,600 out of 5,000 full. So we'll see if it, it gets all the way filled. It's going to be close by lock tomorrow. Uh, I'm not sure it'll get there, but it'll be close by lock. Um so yeah, if you're watching, you want to hang out and draft with us, two more. We need just two more to fill this drafter's MLB draft. Uh, what I didn't say at the top that I should have said at the top, A, if you're with us, thank you for joining. But B, remember, on Wednesdays, it's not only we get to hang out and draft, but we give away free tickets. We give away free tickets Two drafters, shout out to the good people at drafters. Every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, I will be here with you, and I'll be drafting a best ball team this week. 
with opening day tomorrow, we decided to do a baseball draft. A lot of NFL, of course, will be here. But every single Wednesday to one of you live viewers, we'll give away a free ticket to the drafters. NFL Best Ball Championship. I assume it's going to be a $20 tournament, $20 per team entry. And we will be giving away tickets every single Wednesday here until the start of the NFL season. So I will share that Google Sheet here in just a second. Um, really quickly. I am dropping the link to that Google Sheet. If you're watching and you want to be entered to win a free ticket to the drafters MLB or NFL Best Ball Championship, there is the Google Doc in the chat right now. Uh, perfect timing. We are now full in this drafters MLB Best, Best Ball Championship. Shout out. We got all we got the we got uh, our good friend Hacker here. We got uh, who else is in here? Obviously, Melch is in here. Beretta James, see him all the time. This is this is certainly a bunch of sharps. This is certainly a bunch of sharps. So we got our our uh, work cut out for us. Got our work cut out for us. But the other thing that I was going to mention, obviously, B Kurt here. Got all the different Spike Week uh, logos going. Big thing that <clears throat> that I've been I I I believe in for MLB. Even more so, I believe in this in, in all of the sports, but I definitely believe in it more for MLB is that uh, <laughs> this is great. Melch says, Melch says, uh, I'm a sharp, but I've been drinking, drinking scotch. So uh, we'll see if we can take advantage of Melch is probably burnt out from 147 teams and a few glasses of scotch. So hopefully he can be the one that pays the rake for us here in this one, but in baseball, <clears throat> so when people draft best ball teams and say they draft a bunch, right? Melch just drafted 147 teams. When you draft a bunch of teams and you have player takes, right? You have stances on players that you you prefer, like you just love X player at X price. We all have them. Obviously, generally, the cheaper they get, the more you love them. But it could be, you know, it can be a third round pick or something. You have your takes and your your assessment of the market, your assessment of certain players in baseball specifically. I think sometimes people worry about kind of flattening out their exposures a ton. And look, I get it. It's a risk management um, you know, lever that people pull. But I think flattening out your exposures oftentimes is is misapplied assuming that the market is really efficient and just my two cents kind of with what i was saying with the pitchers with what i believe to be some just general edges on some certain like i said player archetypes i think there's some players who can uh have high floors but also mega mega high ceilings that <clears throat> are just really not necessarily appropriately priced and i think that's why i love the game is I'm willing to take massive stands on certain players. Uh, I, I'm I'm well known that uh, this is image of a homer take as I come on the clock here, and I'm going to select the Aaron Judge at the 106. Uh, kicks off Acuna, Soto, Betts, Julio, Otani, and Judge. Pretty standard. Um, the first round and a half, maybe even are pretty cookie cutter. Nothing nothing goes super crazy. I think that there's a pretty clear tier of about 11 or 12 guys, give or take, in my opinion. You could argue for a couple others. But what I love about baseball, basketball, it's not so – right? There's not a lot of people doing these drafts. Shout out uh, uh, Dark Sheep, who's in the Spike Week community, uh, is, does YouTube streams for MLB best ball drafts. Uh, baseball, the Badge Bros, shout out to all those guys because – uh, I think that they've identified like, and I'm sure they love it generally speaking, but they've identified that I think that this space is just ripe for the picking for people who spend real time uh, and, and real effort on, on doing this. Whereas uh, NFL is of course, ripe For the picking, I still think that there are big edges to find in NFL best ball, but man, baseball, I just feel like the market is extremely inefficient and those are the games that we really want, want to attack. Um, if you are just joining, thank you. Welcome. We're just now getting into the second round of a drafters MLB Best Ball Championship 
draft. But at the end of the draft, we'll be giving away a free ticket, a $20 ticket to the NFL Best Ball Championship, the upcoming NFL Best Ball Championship. And there is a link in the chat to the Google Doc in the first column. Just put your name, email, whatever, whatever. And then you and I will get in touch after the show if you win. And I'll get you hooked up from the good people over at Drafters every single Wednesday. We're giving away these tickets. I'm excited about that. Uh, back on the clock. And Fernando Tatis comes all the way back around. Did did I miss some injury uh, issues or something for, for Tatis? I'll take it. V. Kurt goes for the Brave stack. A little Olsen Riley. Gotta love that. Hacker, Freddie Freeman, and Kyle Tucker. Is that is such that's so insane. <clears throat> Uh, to be able to get combos like Freddie Freeman and Kyle Tucker, Corbin, oops, Corbin Carroll, and Jordan Alvarez, to be able to get some of these combinations, and frankly, Judge and Tatis is crazy. Our, our man Melch is definitely on the scotch, taking Spencer Strider, 10th overall. I do think Strider on drafters. Another fun part about the drafters experience, how, like how to consider the elite ace arms can be a little bit different over, over here. I still generally prefer waiting a little bit more on, on pitching, but you know, these guys are going to score the most points. They're also going to score the most points at the beginning of the season. And if they stay healthy, they can really separate from the field. And all it takes is a couple of really good value picks at the infield and outfield positions. And Strider can be more valuable, even more valuable on in this format, this cumulative scoring format than any other best best ball format. That's another reason why I love the game is it's very, it's none of these games are solved on underdog or DraftKings. Very, very far from it. But I, I think that the cumulative aspect does create more strategies that I myself would be willing to dive into that. I'm not necessarily as into on the other platforms where it's all back weighted, right? All that matters, you need to sneak in. You need to sneak into the dance, sneak into the playoffs, and then have your team at its peak by the time you get to the playoffs. That's like all that matters in the other, the you know, on underdog and on DraftKings. And that's a great, I love that game. I love the format. But on here, it creates some extra wrinkles, right? If Spencer Strider comes out and just blows away the field for the first two months, that is a huge, that is a huge deal. If he does that on underdog, it's like, hey, there's only one Spencer Strider team in your in each league. You can still get second. Like even if he's like the guy you needed, you can still get second and advance. Or in some tournaments, more than two. Right? You, you there's still a lot of ways to go about a successful season. Let's see. We went Judge and Tatis. I'm gonna take Marcus Simeon. I'm I'm on a Rangers kick. Not so much chasing the Wyatt Langford uh, steam, but <clears throat> I think you'll probably see in this draft. I'm um, superstars and good offenses are definitely where I live. I also feel like for certain teams, the Astros. The Astros are probably my biggest stand. Across all all sites, I feel like people are just bored of the Astros. Obviously, Jordan and and Tucker go in the first round, give or take, right? Their second round here. Um, but like people are bored of Jose Altuve. People are bored of Alex Bregman, and I can just get these guys cozy, like in super cozy prices. I've already got an outfielder or two. You you can get Chaz McCormick later if you really want to get fun. And put on, you know, a, a Yiner Diaz or or even Jeremy Pena or something like that. Maybe those guys are a little more relevant on the other sites, but still the Astros is just another loaded offense that nobody that nobody wants to I'm saying nobody, it's not like they're lowly priced, but you know what I mean? Like it's just cozy to draft some of these teams. <coughs> B Kurt says, uh, knew I shouldn't have pushed Ellie. You definitely can't push uh Consigliere says, uh, it's not boredom, it's hate for Altuve being a cheater. I, you're not going to get an argument from me on that. That is for dang sure. Yeah, see, now we're sitting in the Rangers' range. 
But you know who I'm tr- I've really been trying to get more exposure to? I took right before this. That feels this feels aggressive, but I'm not sure he's gonna get back to me. And uh uh O'Neill Cruz. O'Neill Cruz feels to me like uh uh B Kurt was mentioning, you know, L, I shouldn't have pushed Ellie. I'm not sure Cruz would have got back to me. And I'm just trying to get quite frankly, not doing hundreds and hundreds of MLB best ball drafts. Cruz is just a guy I want. I want on my teams and I'm pretty comfortable, right? With whoever falls back here. I'm up in nine picks, whether it was Lindor or Langford or Gunner, you know, Tay Oscar, but th- this, this range, I'm pretty comfortable with whoever falls back. So I'm just going to take my guy right there that I'm trying to get. I, I, I frankly, I don't know why I don't have a huge stand on O'Neill Cruz. I did last year. That was painful. God, that was painful. Cruz tanking a lot of teams between O'Neill Cruz and Jacob DeGrom last year. The bank account took a beating. The bank account took a beating. Um, a good question from our good friend Tebow Time. Shout out to you. Thank you for joining us. Curious, is the strategy for baseball, best ball contest similar to that of NFL where you would focus on team stacking a little bit yeah a little bit uh i think stacking it's it's really similar actually where at the it <clears throat> like if i'm creating a decision tree you know what i mean you st- you still always 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 are going to start at the top of like my ranking and my ins- my assessment of this player so if i have right if i <clears throat> if i get to so if i just did it right i just took o'neill cruz i was prioritizing o'neill cruz in the fourth round I could have taken Evan Carter or White Langford, and I, I I have, and I have those guys. I could have taken somebody, and I guess no, but no other correlation existed there. But I I could have just gone. Oh, I'm going to build out this stack. But you, like I said, you kind of have a decision tree, and it always starts with the the individual player. But then you start to work your way down the the decision tree, and you say, Ah, I'm in a I'm in a tier of a like a bunch of like players. Okay, not not. How do I, right? They're all the same. I get, there's 12 guys. They're all the same. How do I decide? I start to work my way down. Your structure is definitely going to be the most important thing. See, now you're putting my feet to the fire. Back on the clock, Wyatt Langford, Teoscar Hernandez, Alex Bregman, all guys I love. But I, I'm actually going to do Teoscar over Langford, and I'll talk about that. Why? But with baseball, there's extra, there's nice boost correlation boosts as well for the inter-team stuff, right? So <clears throat> in any individual game, if I'm hitting leadoff, I'm O'Neill Cruz, I'm hitting leadoff and I get on base. That now, the people hitting behind me have the potential to drive me in. So if they get a hit, that's extra points they got for an RBI that they wouldn't have got if I was on base. I wasn't on base. And then it's points for me for scoring a run that I wouldn't get if my teammate didn't get hit. So you can stack up extra points through that level of correlation. You can also have the added correlation of all, I can have more guys in an advantageous advantageous environment at the same time. Think Coors Field, right? A good matchup. They have a good pitching matchup against a bad pitcher. I have more of my guys all at the same time, which can create those spike weeks that we need to put a big score. And then... Oh, damn it. I was really hoping uh, (sighs) Bregman or Wyatt or somebody would come back. All right. Now, I really don't like George Springer. Let me think. Let me think forward here. Uh, I'm going to take Machado. So I'm up to four infielders, so that's going to be something to start to consider. But we're going to go uh, that there's an example of that decision tree. Didn't that was un, completely unplanned? You just saw it raw and uncut. Uh, I have Fernando Tatis. I the guys who I was hoping would fall back here. Basically every single person <laughs> that went in went went there. Bregman, even the pitchers, Wyatt Langford, Nick Castellanos. Those are guys I preferred. So then I got to a tier where. I don't. I, I, George Kirby to me is one of the pitchers who I'm not drafting, who I think is the, the wrong archetype for best. Good real life pitcher. I'm not taking him 55th overall. I think George Springer is overvalued. Zach Gallon's fine. Santander's fine. Nimmo's fine. Right. All these guys. It's kind of a flat tier of fine. I think Blake Snell would probably have been my favorite 
actual like individual player there. But once I get to that tier, I'm going to side with that correlation. It's exactly what we were, we were just talking about, right? Now I got Tatis and Machado. Not only do I have the correlations that I just talked about, but you also have potential correlation of oftentimes a little bit more with uh, like cheaper teams, but not, not entirely where when they just kind of all come together, right? Look at the Braves last year. Look at the Rangers last year. When an entire, when an offense is popping, when the good hitters or not even just the good hitters, but when the whole offense is exceeding expectations, you can just have like multiple, right? You can get multiple spots on your team, right? By just lo- having three or four guys from the same team. And so um, we'll see if I can execute it. Something I've been trying to do uh, with one of the teams here. Uh, like I said, I'll, I'll be interested to see if I can make it work, but I believe in some different angles around that exact correlation. And I, I do, tr- I, I don't make, you know, you don't make every decision, like I mentioned, based upon correlation, but I do think there are uh, a lot of times where you get, you know, you get onto the clock and it does become the deciding factor because you're in just like this big flat tier. Of course, your exposure and those kinds of things can, can matter. Uh, you see, I've already dropped, I'd like the Orioles. So even though I'm not a huge Anthony Sand, like Santander is fine, but I love the Orioles and he's an outfielder, which is of course the more scarce position. Um, I have a bunch of him. And so I'm going to take James Altman. We're getting really rich on the James Altman price, but he, uh, he is a, a, among the top, you know, hundred picks or 125 picks, depending upon what site you're on. I think James Altman is the guy who is my biggest individual player, player stand. Um, This is a guy, young, talented hitter, hits for power, steals bases, now should be playing every day. Has There's always platoon concern with young left-handed hitters, especially on good offenses, but has less platoon concern uh, this upcoming season, uh, particularly because they need him in the outfields. But just a young emerging player, on a Dodgers team who he doesn't have to be the man, right? If Corbin Carroll fails, the Diamondbacks fail. If James Outman fails, the Dodgers will be just fine. There is no pressure on this young kid. Just hit sixth or whatever he's hitting behind Betts, Otani, Freeman, Will Smith, Teoscar, Max Muncy, right? Behind all these dudes. Just chill. Let those dudes get on base for you and do your thing. And he has the profile. Uh, that we want like mega mega upside profile and so that's the kind of guy i i love uh another guy that i love we're gonna finally get my first pitcher off the board here freddie peralta i take a bunch of freddie peralta uh major strikeout pitcher um and that's a good example of i like this range i like max freed fine a little less strikeout upside with freed than freddie but He's on the Braves, so that's a you know plus from a win expectation situation compared to the Brewers. But also, as a uh, as a again resident Cardinals fan, the Central not amazing. I would be totally fine with pitching against the Central against the you know the offenses are okay. Reds, Cardinals, Pirates, uh, Cubs, Brewers, Brewers not so much. But and he's on the Brewers, of course. But like, there's also a lot of swing and miss on all those teams, like a ton of swing and miss on all those teams. And Freddie was pretty lights out last year. So kind of having the ability to get a pitcher of that caliber in, as your first pitcher in the eighth round, I love it. But the Outman thing is, I think, a good indicator of kind of how, how I like to think about um, baseball, best ball, not like mega differently than than everybody else, but like just a little a little differently. Like people say, "Oh my god, how could you possibly?" A, I think the Spike Weakers are are ruining uh, <clears throat> drafters' ADP. He does not go this high on the other sides. Neither does Chaz Chaz McCormick, who I like a lot. Either the the drafters' ADP is rough, uh, and I mean I mean rough in a way that the people drafting on here are sharp the Melches and everybody that are drafting on here. It's tough. It's a tough, it's a tough site. Uh, But he's the kind of right. Like boom bust type 
and not even boom bust. I shouldn't even call it that. But he's the type of boom with a with a a floor when he busts. It's like the worst case scenario is he's fine. That's that's part of my stance on Ellie De La Cruz, who B. Kurt pushed, uh, did not get him to fall back to him. Where Ellie De La Cruz has major flaws, right? Real big, serious flaws about his game. He's 22. That's a significant issue. Uh, all right, give me one second. We're going to go Grayson. We're going to go Grayson. We're going to bet on the Grayson. I also traded for Grayson in my uh, franchise on the show. Just recently got MLB the show. Building up the Cardinals. Getting rid of all these losers. All these all these guys that <clears throat> John Mosaic won't trade away. We, we're trading them on the show. We're bringing in Grayson and Jackson Holiday and O'Neill Cruz, actually. The Cardinals. Um did miss this. Lucas, shout out Lucas. Very glad the contest size is double last year's. Yeah, the the contests on drafters can't give away all the goods for the upcoming NFL season. But man, they just keep pushing the envelope. Contests keep get, getting better and better. All sports, all different contests. Uh, it's awesome. Melch asks, will you be doing any NBA slash NHL best ball playoff trust? Definitely. Um, I can't confirm NHL. Yet, because I don't know shit about uh, NHL. I follow the Blues and the Blues only. I can speak about the Blues, and that's the only hockey team I can speak about. But uh, we'll see about that. NBA for sure. Like, Stone Cold Lock, NBA. All right. Uh, and so I, I'm able to execute this. And this was this is something I'm doing a lot. So I took Max Muncy for the audio listeners, which means I don't have Mookie, Freddie or Otani, but I took Teoscar, James Outman, and Max Muncy. And this this is something I've been doing in about as many drafts as I can as I can here down the home stretch, where I think people will shy, even those who do stack, the, you guys, the folks we're drafting against, a lot of times they'll build their stacks from that first round pick. When Mookie, Freddie, Otani, like those dudes are just going to be rock solid no matter what happens, right? They're always good. They're superstars. Some of the best hitters in baseball. I want them together if I can get them. A, you can't, but I would like them together if at all possible. But I don't want to only build Dodger stacks just because I have Mookie. These these three guys in particular, Will Smith to a lesser extent, but we have catcher issues, right? He's an infielder. There's no catcher position. He's going to miss more games than most infielders. But I mix him in as well. But those three guys in particular are the guys hitting behind. They get to reap the rewards. They get to be the same above average players that they've always been, right? Teoscar, Muncy, Outman, above average players. Outman with the kind of young, youthful upside. But Muncy and Teoscar, just proven veteran power hitters. And they get to hit behind arguably the best top three we've ever seen in the in modern baseball history. I don't want to get into the. 60s and 70s and stuff, but Mookie, Otani, and Freddie Freeman is quite possibly the best one, two, three we've ever seen. And I can scoop the guys who get to reap the rewards of that. Of course, Mookie and Otani, those guys are going to score their points, but the the value rise of those other Dodgers is huge to me. And I just been trying to uh, load those guys up a little bit here uh, down the home stretch. It's probably my favorite little mini correlation. D Ross in the chat says, I have that same LAD stack in one of my DK teams with glass. Now. I love that. I love that. Um, glass. Now is another guy who I mentioned before. Like I like to wait on pitcher. I think pitchers later are undervalued and all that. And I, I do believe in that, but I also believe uh, that Tyler glass. Now is Tyler glass. Now. And he's now on the Dodgers, <laughs> which speaking of, Perfect time. I'm going to take Bobby Miller, who I, I don't really take a ton of. I have like minor concerns about, about Bobby Miller, uh, but not the upside. <clears throat> and another talking about the stacking and the correlation stuff, the minor, like this is minuscule. But again, he's like two rounds past ADP. Not quite, but almost. You round, round and a half, excuse me. Round and a half past ADP. 
young upside pitcher on the Dodgers. And I have a Dodger stack. So think about if my Dodger stack is excelling, scoring a bunch of runs, that's giving my pitcher a better chance at wins. It's also giving him a better chance at just sticking in games longer because you're up eight, nothing. You don't, we don't need to rush to the bullpen. We can save the bullpen. Just little, little, little thing, right? That is a micro lever of all micro levers, but it like, I, those are, well, that's the game of best ball. There is no thing that solves any of this, any sport, any tournament, any format, whatever. Nothing is solved in one or two, three different strategies or, or questions and answers. But it, when we stack the micro levers, little, little things that our opponents aren't doing that we can benefit from. Because when, when that goes right, what happens? Like it's a boost to four or five guys on your team. You can stack those small little wins and that that is huge. Uh, I'm going to give me a little Jung Ho Lee here. This is a guy who, uh, uh, as the outfielders have risen like crazy, uh, Jung Ho Lee has kind of been not flatline, but getting him at 115 is pretty nice. I'm um, clearly a little bit in need of outfielders with Judge, Teoscar, and Outman. I'm probably going to end this with seven out. I'm probably it's probably going to be seven, six, seven, seven pitchers because I did take, you know. I didn't like completely punt the position when there's a flex hitter like there is on drafters. So on DraftKings, if you draft on DraftKings in the next 12 hours, there is no flex hitter. You start three pitchers, three infielders, three outfielders that boosts the value of the pitcher. Right. Uh, but on underdog and on drafters, there's a flex hitter. So we need, especially over the entire season, man, your, your team's going to have attrition. Guys are going to sit out and be, you know, have bad weeks. I, I need I need to bank a little bit more on my ace arms on drafters than I do necessarily on some of the other sites where I'm really just planning it, right? Just tread water, eke through the regular season, make it to the playoffs, and be uh be at, at my peak, you know, be peaking, have the young guys or 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 whoever that are peaking come playoff time. It's a different game over here on drafters. Uh, this this is def this is this is a good a good point. Glassnow didn't often get an opener in front of him, uh, at least that I can recall. But at least it, we've removed the possibility of it ever happening. We've removed the Rays chaos, and I love the Rays. I draft the Rays pitchers. I draft Rays, uh, generally speaking. But it is like a little nuisance when you're drafting the pitchers. The, those kind of things can happen. They will limit guys, right? They'll pull guys early. Um, I remember so much. Uh, I'd have to double check this to make to make sure. But I just, re it's how I it processed it in the moment. It was Jeffrey Springs a couple of years ago when Jeffrey Springs kind of broke out? That was a guy I was on. Here's another guy who I'm uh, I'm into, Dalton Varsho, that I've been taking a lot more. Another guy who I took a big stand on last year, and good God, he shit the bed. Awful, awful season from Dalton Varsho. Also, uh, the fact that he was still catcher eligible in like most fantasy leagues last year was hilarious. But nonetheless, Dalton Varsho is another kind of guy who is like a, he reminds me of, a, <clears throat> if you're using like NFL references, right? If you come from, and, and I, a lot of people come from NFL, so I like to, use NFL comps. He's like what people would call, you know, like a, a shout out Hayden Winks, a better in best ball player or a spike week player, Gabe Davis, MVS, that kind of stuff. It's he's a power and speed guy. We don't know exactly how good in real life Dalton Varsho is, but he hits for power and he steals bases. End of discussion in the outfield at pick 126 on a solid blue Jays offense. They were down a little bit last year. Vlad and Bo Bichette were not as good. George Springer was not as good, but I like buying Varsho particularly. Uh, I like Vlad a ton, and I like Varsho like a, a, a an absolute ton. Another pitcher who I love a ton. <clears throat> if you uh, have used the MLB Best Ball Almanac on on Spike Week, totally free. If you haven't, go check it out. Go to go to the website. Go to SpikeWeek.com. In the header, there's Best Ball Almanac Hub the MLB 
Almanac is totally free. You don't have to have an account. You don't have to have anything. Uh, so if you want to hop in some drafts, go read a couple of quick articles that we put out there uh, or listen to the round table, those kinds of things. It's out there for you to use. Um, and I believe my, in my core picks for pitchers article, Nick, Nick, it's Nick Pavetta is like the guy. He's another guy where he, he might be the epitome of where I believe the mark is just like, like wrong about pitchers. And I could be wrong. We could clip this in a few months and Nick Pavetta is getting rocked like old Nick Pavetta. And I'll be totally wrong. And that's okay. But the market isn't pricing in how good Nick Pavetta was last year. The market picks and chooses so much when to say, oh, yeah, this guy, it was real. And then, oh, this guy, mm, but he's Nick Pavetta. But if you go look at just like all, everything, but particularly the strikeouts and swing and miss stuff, which, again, this game is for pitching predominantly strikeouts, Pavetta was elite and he he was all he continued to be really good this spring he is the ace of the red sox staff which is kind of crazy but it's true that division is a little less scary than it used to be and like you you just don't get guys with his stuff from last season in round 14 like if if nick pavetta was in nfl best ball and he did what he did last year he'd be like a fifth round pick Right, he'd be, he'd be Rashad White. Nick Pavetta would be like Rashad White, going from that you know cost up to the fifth round the next season. All right, I have four pitchers, five infielders, and five outfielders. I have only a few seconds left on the clock here, and I am going to we're going to take old reliable Nate Uvaldi. Super lame, just super lame. But it it's sometimes the boring pitchers can be okay. He doesn't have a total lack of strikeout stuff. Um, we like to call him. This is going to sound bad. Uh, straight Nate, because his his face his uh, not for the reasons that you may be thinking. You uh, sick, twisted individuals. He's fast. He throws his fastball. There's no movement on it. Right. That the four seamer has no movement. But he's just like. I have Grayson, I have Bobby Miller. Mixing in guys like Evaldi, especially on good teams, who are just, he's going to start every five days. He's probably going to win a lot of games being on the Rangers. And that does have value in the cumulative format. And so I do, I do as much as I love to talk about uh, Pavelas, and we'll get to some of my other guys, DL Halls and Louis Varlins and, and Garrett Crochet and AJ Pook. Pook, Puke, Puck. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Kenta Maeda. All these guys with big strikeout upside, but wide ranges of outcomes. I do mix in the Nate Uvaldi's of the world as well. Goddamn, Consigliere. You should start a blog. You should start your own uh, tout site because you just absolutely nailed it. He says MLB best ball is the wild fucking West. Good player takes and structure can take you far. Nailed it. Totally agree. Just understand the type, right? Like if you understand the game and the rules and like the fact that we're rewarded for hitting high end outcomes and, and, and uh, median projections are borderline useless and we basically don't care about them. I mean, I, I know Jordan Walker's infield on, on this, on, on here, but that's crazy, man. This price is getting out of control, and I don't really have. But I really do like Hayes. Nah, we're going Homer. We're going full Homer. Jordan Walker. <laughs> Nailing. That is impressive. That is impressive. We might have to hire you. He's And Consigliere says, I'm chatting at work. Want to get it, get me out of here with a gig? I'm asking for a friend. It is impressive that you're at work and able to basically – in one YouTube chat comment, nail MLB best ball. I'm going to talk for an hour about it here. And you are at work and summarized everything I could have said in one comment. That's pretty good.
Uh, let me double check. Hey, what did I miss here? Arenado is dead. Oh, let me guess. You drafted a bunch of Nolan last year. Tough year. <laughs> Tough year for old Nolan. Tough year. Oof. Uh, and then just on the correlation point, a couple things that Melch mentioned, which I totally agree with. <laughs> also, Ziglier says Bregman also a cheater. Yeah. Got to be willing to, like, <clears throat> Tyreek Hill is a piece of shit, but I draft him in NFL best ball, right? Like, uh, Big Ben was a piece of shit. Uh, I don't draft Deshaun Watson. I guess I do have a line. Cheating, trying to win, cheating and trying to win is like, okay. Uh, the line really should probably be before Tyreek too, but um, Deshaun Watson, I guess, is where I have my my line. So I'm a... I'm a bad person and a fl and a flawed person, but I guess we all have our tipping points. Uh, cheating with the Astros is not one of them. Also, go read if you like. Uh, I've gotten big into to Moneyball as a concept, trying to relate it to best ball this year. So, I'm gonna reread the book and, of course, watch the movie about a hundred times. Great movie. Uh, but there's a book called Astro Ball that I, I highly recommend. It's back there. It's back there it's on the bookshelf somewhere. Uh, good. It talks about how they kind of built this, right? They were, if you recall, the Astros were the, the, what the Tigers are right now, except they didn't pay a bunch of money for Javier Baez. Um, what is that the worst contract in a long time in baseball? Jesus, what a horrible contract. Um, <clears throat> all right, back on the clock, sitting at, Still five pitchers, comfortable with that. P done at infield, so either outfield, <laughs> my guy Kalenic, outfield or pitcher. I'm going to go, we're going to go Bryce Miller. Oh, gosh, I just can't believe Brian Wu starting the year on the, on the injured list. What a mess. What a mess. Uh, so anyway, that the Astro ball, the, you know, the Astros, like I said, they were the tigers. They were the pirates of a few years. They're the nationals. Now they were the, they were awful, awful. And the, the book kind of details, it's a lot of, it's very money ballish as you can tell from, from the name, but like how they went about their process, like how they found Correa and Altuve and, and, and those kind of guys. And it's good. I, I enjoyed it. But I love that nerdy shit. Oof. Melch is a Rockies fan. So speaking of uh, tough times, goodness. Not sure the Rockies are ever going to get out of uh, get out of this uh, hole they have dug themselves into. Let me just double check what's going on in the outfield here. I probably should have been monitoring this. You guys have steamed up my guy. Will is Will Benson off the board already? What is wrong with you guys? Like legitimately, what is wrong with you? Can't we just ever have nice things? I'm taking Kalani. Fuck it. Here's another guy. Uh, a home run swing. I'm going to take seven outfielders. He's my sixth. So I feel pretty comfortable, right? Aaron Judge, Teoscar Hernandez, James Outman, Jung Ho Lee, Dalton Varsho, Jared Kalenic. Um, I get all the concerns with Kalenic issues with the platoon issues with his production, but he was pretty good for the Mariners last year. If you look under the hood, um, Woba, X Woba, WRC plus stealing bases, hitting for power. I, I, I think the spring struggles and the fact that they brought Adam Duvall in who fun fact Adam Duvall is going to play against lefties uh, to start the year, I think, over Kalenic. And Kalenic was better than Duvall was last year against lefties. Kalenic was above, was he was like something like a 110 WRC plus. I don't have it in front of me. Uh, but so like 10 points above league average against left-handed pitching last year. Small sample. But so was Adam Duvall. Small sample. And Adam Duvall was like 12 points below league average against left-handed pitching. So I think that they're, they're just covering their bases. They don't have a fourth outfielder worth a shit and they put some faith in Kalenic. So they're trying to win a world series. 
I think it's smart for them to bring in somebody like Adam Duvall as a, as a backstop, uh, no pun intended. But uh, if Kalenic hits his, hits his ceiling, this 175 price tag is egregious, and he's going to be one of my seven outfielders. It's fine. I have no problem drafting him with platoon concerns. He, he, you can put up big weeks sitting against lefties because guess what happens when the team starts a left-handed pitcher? What happens a lot of the times is that you pinch hit partway through the game. And so, yes, you're missing at-bats when lefties come in against you. But like most pitchers are right-handed. Most teams don't have that many left-handed pitchers. Most teams don't have that many left-handed relievers. You play the majority of the at-bats when you play against righties. You can have big weeks playing against only right-handed pitching. All right, I'm taking AJ Puck. Somebody tell me how to pronounce his last name. But former big prospect that I'm pretty excited about. Go look at what he's done in the spring. Wow. Wow. He's only been in uh, the bullpen thus far in Major League Baseball. Something about the Marlins are like low-key little Rays ask every pitcher that ends up on the Marlins turns to gold. Now they get hurt. They seem to get hurt. <laughs> All of them. Sandy got hurt. Now Yuri Perez is hurt. Trevor Rogers got hurt. That's another one of my guys. Trevor Rogers got hurt. Sixto Sanchez got hurt. Right. All these guys got hurt. Uh, so maybe unfortunately, uh, hopefully that doesn't happen to AJ, but they turn these guys to gold, man. Braxton Garrett, like all oh, yeah. These guys are not major, major like superstars. And Sandy, Sandy Alcantara is winning Cy Youngs. Crazy. Um, I should have paid a lot more attention and got an outfielder ready because I'm back on the clock for my last pick. Who I am interested in taking the taking the discount on TJ Friedel. That's probably what we're going to do. Or Jose Siri. Let's just do. I'm going to do Jose Siri. Jose Siri, so I am, but more so on DraftKings and Underdog. I was buying the dip on TJ Friedel. He, he's he's such a monster fantasy producer on an offense I love, in a park I love. He steals bases. He has for power. Monster season last year. And <clears throat> he'll be back six weeks, something like that. Six weeks over the grand scheme of Underdog and DraftKings where I have other outfielders who are healthy. I just need to use their points for six weeks. That's fine. I'm not going to fall so far behind. I can't come back. But on drafters, it is a little more difficult. That is six weeks. I don't have an outfielder. And if I can, like Jose Siri versus TJ Friedel, I much prefer TJ Friedel. But Jose Siri, I think, is undervalued as well. And the key is the opposite of Friedel. Friedel is going to miss some time. Uh, and then maybe who knows what's going on. They got so many bodies in Cincy, whereas Jose Siri, all of his teammates are out, and he is going to have to play every goddamn day until he can't play anymore, until these guys come back. And even then, he's he's going to play every day, I think. But uh, pretty productive, right? 30 home runs last year, I think it was, for, for Jose Siri. So I think, again, getting him in the last round as an outfielder with all with the outfield prices is uh, is pretty crazy. Yeah, of course. Melch took Benson. Of course, that's my that's my guy for anybody that knows. Uh, all my guys in the MLB Best Ball Almanac, if you're watching this and you want to hop in some drafts or you just want to troll me for my bad takes after the season locks, right? And Will Benson starts over 20 or whatever, just like he did last year. Uh, it's fine. I don't mind. Uh, ooh, Best Ball Moderate wants some sauce. Let's check, let's, let's, let's check out what you've got going on here. It's hard to screw up a... Uh, Best ball moderate started from the 101. Ronald Acuna, Corey Seager, Mike Trout. That is like that is like asking for sauce with a zero running back team and starting like Jamar Chase, Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors. You're like, no, buddy, I love those guys. You wanted sauce because you knew that your first three were uh, the 101 and the best fantasy player. Corey Seager, who is an absolute superstar, and Mike Trout, who is one of the best baseball players of all time. <laughs> like, yes, you're in good shape. Uh, Luis Castillo, um, I'm a big fan. I don't generally draft him up there. Francisco Lindor, I think, is a good pick. I, I passed on him for O'Neill Cruz, I believe. But 
Uh, he's a good pick. I think he's a good pick. He's probably also undervalued because of the infield outfield, interesting stuff. You hammered some pitchers. This is where if we're, if we're saucing, this is too many early pitchers. I would leave one of these guys out. I think taking three early pitchers is like not the worst thing. Cause you start three of them just right. It's kind of like a robust running back uh, team in NFL. Like I'm going to take Castillo and Webb and Nola and like, let's get those guys for the first little bit. They're going to have big seasons. They're going to mostly carry me. And then I'll backfill my pitching staff with some late guys. I think Cole Raggins, who I do like, uh, I, I just would have not done all of those guys. Kettle Marte is fine. Cedric Mullins. I like Giancarlo Stanton would be great. If it was like 2013 it would be great. He would be great on this team. Lord Escariel is a little overpriced to me, uh, but it's fine. It's fine. He's an outfielder. You needed an outfielder. I get it. Then we go Reese Hoskins, Vinny Pasquantino, fine. Anthony Volpe, fine. Jackson Holiday, fine. Uh, ja Jackson Holiday, I have small concerns about on, on drafters, specifically starting in the minors, because who like I suspect he'll be up fairly quickly. Like we're gonna get to the end of May and he'll be up or something. We'll be laughing laughing about this, but that is that is some time, <laughs> two months out of the season where you're you have a total stone cold zero. And on drafters, that is is more important. Uh, Alex Verdugo is like total meh. Like you want to talk about a lefty who can't take advantage of the short porch at Yankee Stadium? We're talking about Alex Verdugo. Uh, Nestor Cortez, fine. Cutter Crawford, I like. Michael Conforto, fine. So uh, it's sauce level, right on a on a scale of one to ten in terms of how much I would sauce this in. Right, so higher is the worst. A one would be that you drafted the best team of all time. A 10 would be you drafted the worst team of all time. You know, this is a, this is low. This is a 4.5. That might be high. It's a fine team. A little bit of mush. You draft, you drafted some, some bland ass oatmeal, right? You drafted some bland oatmeal and a little bit too much early pitching, but it's honestly fine. It's totally fine. Melch, I didn't even want to think about your lineup. I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Four pitchers in the first six rounds. That is, seems extreme. Did you only draft four pitchers? No. So what do you? So tell me this. What is the point of four pitchers in the first four rounds and still drafting eight pitchers? I know, like that scotch. What proof is the scotch that you are consuming tonight? It's got to be a big number. Because that doesn't make any sense to me. You drafted Spencer Strider in the first round, Corbin Burns in the third round, Tarek Skubal in the fifth round, and Tyler Glass now in the sixth round. None of which are bad picks in a vacuum. Bobby Witt and Ellie De La Cruz, I like both. I like you took Will Benson, 91st overall. 91st? No one has more Will Benson than me. N no one. I'll take that to my grave, no matter how big of an L he is. I love Will Benson. I stand Will Benson. 91st overall is aggressive. Very aggressive. Uh, CES, Christian Encarnacion uh, Strand. Uh, fine. 110. I think it's fine. Uh, I do like him. Jazz, Nico. I don't know. This team is a mess. I don't even know what to say. Scale of 1 to 10. You know, we're going to use the barstool pizza review model this is up there do you have like so your outfield is ian hap will benson nelson velasquez brent rooker brian de la cruz and hunter renfro and you're gonna win a cumulative scoring format over six months with that outfield this is like a 8.3. It has Will Benson, so it can't go super high in CES. And I like your pitchers. But other than that, it's not great. Ooh. Resident CTO of Spike Week, Hacker says, uh, wants a team rating. Well, <clears throat> I, th I, th you or Beretta James got the, the well, or me. I'm going to be on. I'm going to be honest. Judge Tatis, Freeman Tucker, 
and Corbin Carroll, Jordan Alvarez, in my opinion, are the best Acuna Seager and Acuna Seager. So no offense to everybody else you drafted. Like I, I love Mookie. I love Trey Turner. I love Kyle Schwarber. I love Julio. Like I'm, it's not knocking that, but those are the best round one, round two combos. Freddie Kyle Tucker is sick. Altuve, Devers, Bregman, top five, brilliant. Buying the dip on Yamamoto. I think I drafted Yamamoto on every underdog team last night. I was the one stopping the free fall and I kept pushing it. Like you're getting him at like 65, 70, whatever. Everybody's panicking over the Yamamoto first start. And I was like, I haven't drafted him at all. Like I hadn't drafted Yamamoto one time. And I took him in all my Yamamoto shares in the last uh, few drafts. So I support it. Lane Thomas, I do actually like. Shout out former Cardinals prospect. Chaz McCormick, I like. Tristan Casas, I like. Jaron Duran, I like. Bailey Ober, one of my guys. Hunter Brown. It's almost like it's almost like we work together and you have access to the rankings and all of our player takes because I'm li- literally Hunter Brown, one of my guys. Tyler O'Neill, also former Cardinals prospect. Uh, so-so. Christian Javier, I like. Kyle Harrison, Reed Detmers. Lars Newtbar buying the dip on Newt. Another one that you, if you're drafting up until tomorrow, even more than Friedel, buy the dip on Lars Newtbar if you're into Lars Newtbar. Uh, he's fine. Like he's he's going to be back at the in ten days. You're going to miss one week from Lars Newtbar, and he went from like pick a hundred to pick one seventy five. It's ridiculous. People uh, people pan absolutely panic when guys are hurt, and he, he Newt is back. He's basically already back. For the Cardinals, uh, Jorge Polanco. I, he's a fun a little back stack of Polanco. Hanniger is fine. I know you like Eric Fed or Feddy, however the hell you say his name. Eric Fed. Uh, I can't. I, I can't wrap my head around a guy who couldn't strike anybody out in the majors, even though he went over seas and and did it. Um, but I like it. I like this team. I like this team. Yeah, this you, you, this is me. I had no Yamamoto. Hacker says I had no Yamamoto until last week, and I'm at 20% now. I'm not at 20%, but uh, uh, I've definitely been been loading up. All right. Last call. If you are still hanging out with us or you just recently joined, I just posted a link to a Google Doc in the YouTube chat. This is to win a free drafters NFL best ball championship for the upcoming, right? So we're a month away from the drafters NFL best ball championship launching. I assume there'll be another $20 entry fee. We only have a few people entered here, a bunch of people hanging out with us, drafting teams and hanging out watching, but you can enter totally free. I'm not getting your email, nothing. As soon as uh, I give you guys just a second here to finish, we will draw a winner for a free Drafters NFL Best Ball Championship ticket. The prizes are going to be big this summer. I'm very much looking forward to to crushing some drafters drafts. Um, And I'm going to get the wheel pulled up as I give you guys just a minute to uh, get entered there. I guess I probably should have read my own team before we get out of here. I started out at the six hole. Aaron Judge, Fernando Tatis, Marcus Simeon, O'Neill Cruz, Teoscar Hernandez, Manny Machado. Little Padres pairing there. Then I went to my, I talked about it, scroll back to, I don't know, half hour, 40 minutes in to the show, maybe half hour into the show where I talked about that, the kind of backdoor Dodger stack that I really like of Teoscar Hernandez, James Altman and Max Muncy. Also mixed in Freddie Peralta, Grayson Rodriguez and Bobby Miller as my first pitchers, Jung Ho Lee and Dalton Varsho, kind of in a, uh, a tough range for outfielders, but I like both of those guys. Nick Pavetta, Nate Yavaldi, Jordan Walker of my St. Louis Cardinals, Bryce Miller. Uh, so we got Bryce and Bobby, the, the Miller bros, <clears throat> on the team. Jared Kalenic, AJ Puck, Puk, Puk, Puck. We're going to call him Puck because it's fun. AJ Puck and Jose Siri to round out a 7-6-7 seven, seven team. All right. I am loading up the wheel. One second. I'm loading up the wheel and let's give away a free ticket to the drafters NFL best ball. Let's see who wins it. Winner number three. Oh, that is fitting. That is fitting. Shout out. He is sitting at work 
and solved MLB best ball in one YouTube chat message. Brilliant. You deserve to win. Thank you for joining me. Consiglier. Um, Discord is probably the best place. Hit me up on Discord. I'll get you, I'll get your drafters information and get it over to the good folks at drafters and get you hooked up as soon as the contest launch uh, contest launches with the free ticket. If you've not signed up for drafters yet, please. Uh, it would be, we would be very, very uh, in debt to you. Use promo code spike, get a hundred percent deposit bonus up to a hundred dollars. You can also get a free month of spike week premium. You can use the draft hacker that you saw in the draft here today. You can use draft IQ. You can use all of our premium best ball tools. If you sign up for drafters, go to the website and fill out the form under the free membership in the middle of the homepage. But everybody have a wonderful Wednesday evening. Enjoy opening day tomorrow. Enjoy the very first day sweat. We can victory lap our teams when our guys hit home runs on opening day. We are right. We are right about all of those guys. Thanks for hanging out. Rob will be back on Sunday for another NFL best ball stream on Sunday sickos. And we will be back on Monday, right back at it. See you guys next time. Have a good night. Peace. That's the show. Those were some spicy takes. Want to stay up to date with all of the other spicy takes we're going to have over here at Spike Week? Why don't you press that subscribe button below? You turn notifications on. We draft a team. Boom. You know about it. We have another spicy take. Boom. You know about it. You can be there. You can draft with us. You want to stay up to date? That's how you do it. All right. We'll catch you later next time here at Spike Week. <laughs>